Welcome back to season three of 80s References, the show. <laughs> I'm Aaron. I'm Michelle. This is our post geek out reaction of season three of Stranger Things, and we do reaction videos to seasons of TV shows from time to time, but typically we only do the first season and we always drop off after that. This is like the one show that we've continuously been this invested in. Mm -hmm. And it's not just invested to the point where we've continued to do post geek out reactions for it. I mean, like, there's very few shows out there that I even just keep watching after season one or two. Because I got other stuff to do, man. <laughs> man, I remember we were watching this, and you said, so are we binge watching the whole thing tonight? I was like, nah, we don't got time for that. We'll only do half of it. And then we got to episode five. And I was like, all right, it's, what, 11 o'clock at night? We, we can still keep going. And, <laughs> yeah, man, we did the whole thing in a night. Uh, this is... It's really good because it is Stranger Things, and Stranger Things is just really good in general. By this point, if you've watched these series, uh, the previous two seasons, you're invested with these characters. You love these characters. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I feel like this season had some of my least favorite things from the entire series, but it also had some of my favorite things from the entire series. Uh, like, there are many moments in this season that I absolutely love, but there were so many moments, especially at the beginning of this season, where I was looking at it going, oh, no. Oh, this is when it all kind of starts going downhill. Oh, this is when they probably switched a bunch of writers around. Oh, I don't know about this. Yeah, throughout the rest of it, I did start to steadily go back up, and I did get to ba uh, I did get back in there. What about you? How do you feel about this? Um, I definitely feel like, um... They amped up a lot of stuff in this set in the season. Yeah, it, <laughs> <coughs> I know a lot of people who in season two they said that they didn't really enjoy it as much because they said, "Oh, it's basically just season one all over again." I didn't look at it that way. I looked at it sort of as the difference between Alien and Aliens, yes. where it was, "Yeah, we've already seen the thing. Now let's just kind of go nuts with it and let's show them really kind of fighting back a little bit." So that was the feeling I got, and I was totally okay with it. But also, you just got to see characters progressing a lot more in that one. Uh, the character arc of Steve Harrington is one of the greatest character arcs I've ever seen. Because <laughs> when you think back to season one, he was the popular, good-looking guy yeah. who was massively incompetent as well and was a complete dick. Like, he did some stuff to the characters. The main characters, like Nancy and that guy who will never be in the New Mutants movie. Um, <laughs> Will's older brother, who I keep forgetting. Uh, he did some stuff to them that you were like, this is straight-up villain stuff. But towards the end of that season, he started to turn back around. Season two, he had a total turnaround. He actually started to care about these kids and really stepped up to help them out. And season three, that just continues. I really think the character journey of Steve Harrington is one of the best things about this show. And man, I was not expecting to say that after the end of season one. <laughs> uh, but there are other characters in here who I felt were a lot weaker this season. Uh, I feel like Hop is way weaker this season. Yeah, it's like, he was like one of my favorite characters in Absolutely. season one and two, but like, this season, I kind of hated him. Yeah! <laughs> they made him like, way, like, I understand like he's being like the overprotective father, but I felt like they did it, they pushed him way too far. Season one and season two, you saw him, <laughs> our dog is sneezing again down here. <laughs> season one and season two, you saw him being a jerk, but then you would get that heart coming back out. Mm -hmm. Again, it was like a constant struggle back and forth them. Here, he's a total asshole oh, yeah. the entire season. And at the very end, by the way, when we review movies on here, we do spoiler-free up until we give our score, and then we go into a little bit of spoiler talk for anybody who wants our opinions on the spoilery stuff. When we do TV shows, especially TV shows on Netflix, mm -hmm. we just do full-on spoilers yeah. the entire time. Because if, if you have the ability to watch this and you have any interest in watching this, you're going to watch it before you listen to what we think. <laughs> so, yeah, we are about to spoil the stuff. Tune out now. Everybody good? Cool. Jazz hands. Uh, yeah, considering that at the end of this, he dies, and then they come in here with the big letter at the end. And that letter is great. His whole speech that he wrote down there is great. But, man, the entire rest of the season, he is such a jackass. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned a few minutes ago... This had that feeling of when a TV show that had really great characters hires on some new writers and they don't quite get the characters as much. They kind of only get them on the surface level. So they kind of write like caricatures of the characters. Mm -hmm. And the way that Hop was acting in here, I looked at that like that's exactly the feeling that I'm getting from this. Yeah, that's the thing is like I felt like 
the characters that were weaker in the first two seasons got stronger in the third one, but the characters that were strong in the first two seasons got weaker in the third one. Yeah, another character, listen, Hop lost the most credit this mm -hmm. season, which yeah. sucks because everybody liked Hopper. Yes. <laughs> The other character who I feel lost a decent amount of credibility was Will's mom. I don't remember her name, but Winona Ryder. Yeah, Joyce. Yeah, Joyce. Thank you. <laughs> She's here to remind me of the character names. <laughs> most uh, of them. Most I, of them. Some of them I don't really remember. Yeah. Um, I really felt like in this season, she also had a little bit of that feeling of... Um, Caricaturisms uh, that was just like she's not, a crazy not, old mom, or not something. quite to that <laughs> limit, but in the first few episodes, yeah, that's totally the feeling I was getting because it was something happened with my magnets. Okay, let's go to this, and it's this thing, and it's this thing, and it's, okay, it's this, and we're gonna go with all these conspiracies. And you look at it and go, This, okay, I know she's seen some weird stuff, and I can imagine her being paranoid yeah, about I anything understand happening, too, but, but it had that feeling more of like it's Stranger Things, folks, you know, there's gotta be something going on. <laughs> Ah, uh, see, it's got to be a weird thing happened. Clearly, it's all got to be happening. Yeah, it kind of more of just had that feeling with me of, well, we kind of just have to have a thing happen. And it felt like the character of Joyce was recognizing that. It's like... Going, <laughs> some things must be happening because it's season three of Stranger Things. <laughs> it's like there's a season... It's like a Stranger Things checklist. It's like, Joyce has to be paranoid. Something has... Some, Will, ha uh, Will has to have the little tingly sensing check. And it's like, check, 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 check. Like Man, I'm very torn on Will uh, this season as well because last season... I know a lot of people, like I said, they had problems saying it was too much like the first season. I didn't really feel that way, mm -hmm. except for Will. Like, God, when I went to season two, I was so excited. Okay, we saw what happened with the three friends teaming up with L. Okay, now we're going to have the three of them, and Will's in there. We're going to have the whole game. We're going to see what they liked about Will the first time. Will gets taken out so quick that season. Like, I'm wondering if there's, like, something, like, behind the scenes where he, like, can't really be on set that no, much? No, because he's on set when he got taken out in season two. He, he got taken out, but he was still in our world, so you got to see him just, like, lying a bunch. I don't think it's that. I think that they just went, okay, well, we got to continue this story. Yeah, but you could have done a different thing and still continued his story as well. So, yeah, I don't think it's like a contract thing or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I was disappointed in season two with that. This season, I was glad that he was in there. I was glad he was in there. And at the beginning of this season, it looked like he was going to have a big character arc. It looks like he was going to have this big thing that he had to deal with because he still wanted to play D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. He still wanted to have the old feeling they have with his friends, but his friends, they have girlfriends mm -hmm. now, and they have their own thing to deal with, and, you know, you have, like, Mike, he doesn't know what to do about Levin, and Lucas is giving him advice about what to do because he has a relationship with, with Max, but they have a screwed up relationship, <laughs> which, that was another thing that I kept looking at going, I want to see more about Lucas and Max because he's talking about, yeah, she's dumped me like three times, but then you never really get that feeling of like this back and forth thing going on with him. Like, I could, like, there was definitely like some back and forth, but There's I kind some. of felt like it was more like playful teasing, yeah. honestly, not really anything serious. It felt like they had more going on right over yeah, there. Yeah, just over there. Just right over there, but no, my, Mike and Lovin, right there. Yeah, okay. it's like, if you just, like, pan the camera over just, just an inch. There's like... even that moment where they're at the hospital, and they're in the waiting room, and Mike and Eleven, they're, like, right there in the center, but you see Lucas and Max having a conversation right over here. I was like, I'm also invested in them. You know that, right? Like, I kind of care what's going on with them as well. Uh, but as I was saying about Drop Storyline, at the beginning of this, you've got that great moment where Will, he just tears down the fort. And I looked at that and went, oh my gosh, he is going to be a huge focus in this. And we're going to get his whole st story arc in here. Uh, all that stuff about my friends are outgrowing me, that kind of goes away the moment that the Mind Flayer comes around. Yeah, like, I understand that they have more important things to worry about, but this is It's also about balancing. Yeah. Balancing storylines, man. Yeah. yeah. And it felt like they just dropped what could have been a great storyline to have going here. And then Will, I'm glad that he has a purpose. His purpose is he's the kid with the spidey sense. Mm -hmm. He has that little tingle of, oh, it's here. Like, he's the early warning system. But that's not quite a character arc. And Will's whole character arc in the previous seasons was, I'm trapped and I'm possessed. He does get a little bit of a character arc, I felt, with um, Sean Astin. I forget his name. But uh, the guy who was dating Joyce. Um, he had a little bit of a relationship with him. I thought that was great. Uh, and you had this stuff about him trying to deal with it, 
but then that's only for the first couple episodes, and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. Here, he's here the entire time, but he still doesn't really get a whole lot to yeah. do, and that's a real shame. It felt like they wrote this series with a good idea for season one. And I'm not going to say season two and season three are bad. Absolutely not. No. I love season two and season three. But when it comes to the character of Will, they didn't really expect themselves to get more than one season. They mm -hmm. put in that little stinger at the end just in case. But when they got season two, they're like, oh, shoot, what to do with Will? Uh, he's possessed by the demon again. Oh, we got season three. What to do with Will? Well, we can't take him out of the picture again, so he'll be there the entire time. Yeah, but you forgot to give him a thing to do. It's, yeah. Uh, I even got that little bit of a feeling from all the characters that weren't Eleven whenever it came time for, like, a badass moment. I mean, yeah, Eleven's the superpower. Eleven's the one who, she can move stuff around her mind. She's definitely the one who comes in with the big heroic entrance each time. But there came a point where I felt like, okay, I need kind of a justification for why everyone else is still here and why we don't just have Eleven riding around taking care of shit. Uh, there, at the end of this, yeah. Lucas comes in with the fireworks, which I felt like in season one, when Lucas gets the uh, slingshot. slingshot and he puts on the Rambo headband, I thought that was great because it felt like they were coming in here going, that's what Lucas's personality is. He's the guy, he's the action hero character in all this. I didn't get a lot of that in season two. But when he comes in here with, like, no, this is all the details on this firework. We need the fireworks to fight this. I like that because it felt like they were going back to, he's the action hero guy. And he does use the slingshot again. He'd use it Man, to... he leveled up with that slingshot. Yes. That slingshot went from... He was, like, practicing, like... <laughs> that slingshot went from, this is what a kid imagines would be able to stop a monster, to, nah, this is what someone who is skilled with a slingshot could actually do to help out in these situations. So I enjoyed that. I thought it was great what they did with the slingshot in here. That's weird to me that that slingshot has almost become a character. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I also really like Max. When you talk yes. about characters and how he said, oh, well, they didn't really give him too much to do, the relationship between Eleven and Max is so good in here. Yeah, like, speaking of which, it's like, I'm glad, like, the girls are getting their chance to shine. Yes. Because, like, I understand, like, it's the first season, You, well, it was mostly about the boys because, you know, it was that... 80s kids movie vibe. And it was like, always the boys. It the was kids. always the boys on their bikes going on adventures. You don't really have There's any... the one kid sister, yeah. Yeah. Which we'll get to the kid sister <laughs> in a second. So, yeah, having into like, re now that they are introducing the girls and like realizing they're more than just love interests, that yes. they actually are their own people and they have personalities and want to do their own thing, I think that's really great. And I love the interaction between Max and Eleven, how before this, it just been Eleven and Mike. And because it's young love. They can't keep their hands off each other. They are just there like they are constantly want to be close to each other. They hurt when they're not with each other. It's that feeling that you all got from your first love. Mm -hmm. And I thought they captured that pretty well. But when Max uh, uh, comes in here and says, listen, you got to do some other stuff. I thought that was actually a good message of, yeah, Eleven never had any exposure to the outside world outside of her friends over here, and now she's only spending time with Mike. She needed that person to go, here's everything else that you're allowed to do now that you're a human being. Like, I think that's the thing. It's like, a, like a lot of people have been treating like Eleven like almost like a possession. Like Hopper wanted to like, keep her protected. Yes, which in all and, fairness, he lost a daughter. Yes, so you, I understand his but motives, still, but he was still being kind of a dick about absolute, it. Absolutely, yeah. And Mike, he kind of wanted like her all to himself. Mm. He was even ignoring his friends, yep. which is kind of bullshit because Lucas and Max were also hanging out and they could have had like a double date or something. Yeah. Or... <laughs> so yeah, I felt the character interactions between the kids was great. And I'm not just including the, the younger kids in there. Uh, I also think that Nancy was really good in here. I, Nancy has really become one of my favorite characters in this. It's I don't even know if that, that's true because every character is my favorite character <laughs> in this. Uh, but yeah, Nancy is another one of those characters I think has really grown with every single season in here. Uh, Will's brother, the one character whose name I cannot remember, I didn't care about him at all in the first <laughs> season, but I've come to really care about him as the seasons go along. The only thing I cared about Will's brother in the first season was his interactions with Will. But now I really enjoy watching everything that he contributes to this group, uh, and especially uh, Steve. Steve and Robin mm -hmm. this season I thought were fantastic. Ro this show is so good about introducing new characters and making it feel like, no, it's totally cool to have this new character in here. Uh, because Robin comes in 
and she actually plays a big role in decrypting. We have not even talked about the whole Russian thing going on here. She plays a big role in decrypting this Russian message that Dusty was able to intercept. And you don't look at, like, how on earth do you know this? She talks about how she has a really good ear for stuff. How she already speaks three other languages. How uh, She's a musician. She's a musician. Like she says she has a really good ear for stuff. So, yeah, I totally believe that this is a good person to be able to decrypt this message. Uh, but she's not just her purpose, is what mm, is, yes. I guess the best way to say it. She's not just the person there to serve that role. Right. She has her own three-dimensional fleshed-out character in here. And like she used to be in like Steve's class. Yeah, she used to be in. Well, it's not like that's all there is to her. But yeah, she was in Steve's class. And so it's like she knew him already. And he so. was the pop. She knew him from back when he was a dick. Mm -hmm. Is the best way to sum that up. Uh, but there comes that moment, and you watch them in the space, and they are growing closer together. And there comes that great scene. That great scene there where they're in the bathrooms. Which, by the way, that's the most realistic vomit I've ever seen. <laughs> In a movie, I had to turn away from that for a little bit. Of, oh, ooh, no, ooh, don't want to There's about a that. lot of gross stuff this season. There, <laughs> this whole show feels like it could just be PG-13, except there's like one too many fucks in there uh, said. Like, I think there's two said this season, which, then again, it's a TV show, so who knows what the rules are on that. <laughs> uh, but then they just get so graphic with stuff. I mean, the big monster they have to fight is human beings melt down into piles of flesh and blood and organs and merge together to create one big monster. Yeah, it's disgusting. But it's so weird that they have something that disgusting in a show that feels so just 80s, PG 80s, which in all fairness, PG in the 80s is the equivalent of PG-13 now. Um, but that's a whole other argument. Although there were a lot of pretty gross, like, horror 80s movies, like, you know, The Fly and everything. Oh, yeah, but The, the Fly was R-rated. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, but what was I saying? Oh, yeah, um, I got distracted by the talk about the vomit. Uh, they were there, and Steve had the moment where he really just makes this great speech about how he is kind of in love with Robin, and then Robin comes in here with her own speech, and let Steve know, oh, she's actually gay. And Steve, he's got that moment of, oh. And then he immediately like recovers, and they have this conversation from it, in which you just feel like they're the best of friends. And I love that. Steve, this guy who was the biggest asshole in season one, has a full character arc and progresses and continues to grow as a human being in the span of like 10 seconds, but it doesn't feel like that's an unnatural like uh, progression for his character to have at that moment because we've watched Steve grow so much as a human being over the past couple of seasons that you can buy him just growing that much in that moment. Uh, yeah, I love that in that moment, this girl who he was in love with, oh, it can never be. That's totally okay. Uh, takes that moment, <laughs> deals with it, totally okay with it, and now they are the best of friends. Like the conversation they had there at the end, so good. Um, now, one thing that, as I said, when it comes to the adults, Hopper and Joyce, man, in season two, I kept looking at them going, yeah, you know they're going to hook up, and they do have this chemistry, and they do seem so good together. Yeah. But you do kind of want to still, but uh, the Sean Astin was still so good in season one, in season two. And you wanted to kind of see her stick with him because he was so friendly and so nice. And they had really good chemistry <laughs> together. But yeah, you got that feeling from Hopper and Joyce. You knew it was going to happen. This season, I got none of that. No, they were just bickering all the time. And honestly, I was really getting sick and tired of it. When it came it. to that point, like in the last two, three episodes, when the crazy conspiracy guy, Bald Eagle, we'll just call him because that's his code name, when Bald Eagle just says to him, Oh my God, shut up. We all get that you have this weird thing going on. Either shut up about or just have sex and be done. I looked at that and went, I should not be agreeing with this guy. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> I should be looking at you as, and there's a big hint about early on when they're watching uh, Cheers. And it's Sam and Diane and Sean Astin in a flashback saying, yeah, I just, I want them to get back together. And it's like, well, I know what you're referencing. You're talking about, you're talking about Joyce and Hopper, I get. And, oh, are they going to hook up or not? And that's, this is supposed to be their Sam and Diane thing. They had such good Sam and Diane stuff in season two. 
There's none of that no. here. It is so unbearable, their relationship this mm-hmm. season. And part of that is because Joyce, she has, you know, she has like no chemistry going back and forth with him. She just flat out hates him this season. And the other part is because you can't blame her for flat out hating Hopper this yeah, season. Yeah, Hopper's an asshole this season. <laughs> the moment in which he gets up out of the restaurant, yeah, you got stood up, it kind of sucks. When he stands up and he just grabs the wine bottle and is like, sir, you can't take that outside. I can do whatever I want. I'm chief of police. I thought, is this going to be like a super villain origin story going on? Is he going to go down a really dark path this season? But I don't think the writers realized that's kind of how they were depicting him this season. Um, by the way, let's just, I'm going to jump way ahead on something here. There's one other relationship between the adults that I want to get to here. Um, but one thing while I'm talking about Hopper here. Sorry, had a burp. <laughs> At the end of this, when they come in with that little season four stinger, in which it cuts to the Russian base and it's revealed that the Russians have a demogorgon, they go up to one of the jail cells and he goes, no, 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 not the American, the other one. The American's Hopper, right? We're all convinced of this? Or is it just me? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, because at the end of this, you see the big machine explode, and you see the Russian side is winning there. They disintegrate. It did not show us Hopper being disintegrated. And I have a feeling, like Hopper, uh, the actor who played him, he also played Hellboy in the last film. I have a feeling like he said, yeah, guys, you got to make this my last season because I got this big superhero franchise built up. I'm going to be overdoing that. I'm about to become a big movie star right here. I got Tide commercials rolling in. Guys, <laughs> I am set. I am all good. Sorry, but I am done with the TV stuff right now. And Hellboy completely flopped hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that flopped hard like, what, like six, seven months ago? No, not, it, it wasn't that long ago. It was this year. It was like three months ago. God. It was April. Yeah, so it was like three months ago. But it flopped hard. I got a feeling like maybe there was a shot of him being a sangrain. And after it flopped hard, he came back to them just like, so... <laughs> Is there any chance that maybe, and then they cut out the scene of him being disintegrated, and then they shot that post-grad thing of the Russian prison going, no, not the American. Because they were opening a big-ass portal, and we know for a fact that they have a Demogorgon there, meaning that they had to have a portal in the Russian base as well. It's totally possible that Hopper jumped into the big portal and found his way to the Russian portal and came out there. I'm totally convinced he's still alive. But I'm also convinced there was a chance this was going to be his last season, but he came crawling back to them at some point. Or maybe all that stuff was just set up from the beginning. Who knows? Who knows? But, But, like, you mentioned, like, uh, portals and everything, and I was thinking about, like, how, like, they would always make, like, references in in Stranger Things. Like, how they... Let's get into that, (laughs) yes. Like, in one scene, like, when they were doing playing Dungeons & Dragons in the basement, there was a poster of the thing behind uh, behind Will. Not Ben Grimm, John Carpenter's the thing, just for anybody who hasn't seen this and yet for some reason has decided <laughs> to watch it through our spoiler talk. But yeah, I... And then, suddenly, all these people are, like, being cloned. Big or clone taken... goo monster things yeah. that are being possessed. Yeah, it's absolutely what was meant in there to be. And I noticed the poster, but I just noticed it because, hey, the thing, I like that movie. I, what I thought of this was, was a combination between uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but I also yes. thought a little bit uh, the George Romero zombie films, because they go to Day of the Dead there in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, that's supposed to be a little bit of a teaser of what's coming up. No, you're right, it's totally the thing. It is 100% John Carpenter's the thing. But there's a bunch of other ones in there. Like, there's a moment in Will's brother's room where he has an Evil Dead poster in there. And there isn't, like, a big Evo Dead thing going on here, but there is a moment where they have to go out to the work shed to grab the equipment to fight off the monsters. That was totally an homage. It was not a plot point, but it was an homage that they put in here because it was even shot the same way of when Ash enters in, turns on the thing. Yeah, and then there was, like, one point where they were hiding in the movie theater and, in fact, the future was playing, and... I was, was that a reference or what? I don't know if that was a reference, but like you. Meant, I think it was you, more. They just wanted the musical scores in there because it was lining up. 
perfectly because you've got Dusty up there trying to communicate and going back and forth between them, and you've got all the Back to the Future scores going on in the background, <laughs> and it just synced up perfectly. So I don't know if that was meant to be a reference to anything. But it's like I thought maybe it could be like a reference to like season four of oh, Stranger Things. Oh, things to come. Yes, because you did mention that Hopper might have been teleported somewhere, so maybe he could have also been teleported through time? Question mark. Question mark. It's. <laughs> We don't know what comes in season four. No, no. Yeah, man, I, I'm actually kind of shocked they're doing a season four because everybody in here is starting to become such big celebrities. Because Finn Wolfhard, he's now got the It franchise going on. Uh, what's her face? Uh, Millie Bobby Brown, she was in Godzilla. Grand that one didn't do all that well, but it does show she's got she's got in she's got work coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of these other actors they're starting to get stuff. Uh, like the guy who played Will's brother, he was going to be in that new Mutants thing. But then that's locked in the Disney vault forever. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's interesting that they're still going to do a season four. But I'm glad they are because I still really enjoy this show. Uh, yeah, it's like because like there's a, like a lot of things that they, I want them to bring back that they mentioned throughout the uh, the seasons. Like in the season in the second season when. Uh, when uh, Elle ran off and she ha found that group of other... Uh... I have a feeling that was meant to be a pitch for a spinoff series. That's the feeling I got. Maybe, but it's like, at the end of uh, this season, like, Elle and Will and Joyce, they all move away from Hawkins because, you know, they just can't handle all the shit that's been going on. Which is understandable. <laughs> Obviously. I'm shocked she didn't move out immediately after the end of season one. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, I'm wondering, like, since now... This is kind of expanding the universe, the Stranger Things universe, mm. outside of Hawkins. I'm wondering if, like, they will meet up with the uh, gang again? It would be weird for them to not bring back. I still stand by it was originally meant to be a pitch for a spinoff, but that was pretty much everyone's least favorite episode from season two. I actually didn't really have a problem with it. I thought it was okay. No, it's like, I kind of want to see where the characters are going. I like... see. They had, like, a mission. <laughs> they were hunting down these people. It, they had a goal. I was like, okay... In terms of this story, it does kind of stink that you stopped an entire episode, like right before the final episode, yes. to come in here and pitch us your spinoff series. I'd watch that spinoff series, though. So I am, I understand people being upset with it. I didn't really have a problem with it because I do kind of want to see those characters return and want to see more of it. And that spinoff series went nowhere. So, yeah, bring them back, man. Yeah, and it's like, I did like season, th I did like how they actually, like, expanded, like, to like the Russians and everything, it wasn't like just about the the military. The Cold War got a big focus this season. Yes, I mean considering this came out on Independence Day. <laughs> I like that they are timing these around holidays. Yeah, now. I mean it makes sense. <laughs> I have a weird feeling like the next one will come out at Christmas. I just got that. I just get that feeling Maybe. it's gonna come out at Christmas. Um, but yeah, it's like I like that they're like focusing on like not just the portal or the upside down anymore. Like they realize, oh, this is a bigger thing. Like there are other people who are trying to get here through the portal. And it everything. also makes absolute sense that in the '80s, the well, not just the '80s, but the whole Cold War <laughs> was basically. America makes this, Russia makes this, then Russia makes this, so America makes that, then America makes this, and so just do, constantly do, going do, back do, and forth. Do, do, do. If America is trying to open up portals to other dimensions so they can use it as a weapon, you know Russia's going to try and take that too. Uh, I really felt like that was the next logical step for this to take. Yeah, I was like, honestly, like, the whole subplot with the, the chemicals and everything, like, I thought the whole reason why, like, the little rats and like the possessed people or the flayers is that what they're yeah called? that's what they're calling them i thought the reason why they were like consuming and creating these chemicals was because they were trying to fuel the thing to open the portal but it turns out that the thing opening the portal was just entirely russians but since at the stinger we saw that they had a demigorgon maybe they know how that the, they need those chemicals to f power i think it's just stuff inside the uh upside down world is made of Toxic stuff. So it's basically so like they're feeding to survive. They're yes, I think that's what they were doing. They were basically just feeding on the fertilizer and all these other chemicals in, because that's what these creatures need to survive. Okay, I guess that makes sense. It's like I thought like they were like gonna go somewhere with that and with in like season four. Like, I think there's a little. Yeah, I don't think they have anything else planned for that one. Okay. Yeah. Um. But uh, let's see. Oh, the one other relationship between the adult characters that I want to talk about was Alexi and Bald Eagle. <laughs> I love the arc that that friendship had. 
Uh, Alexi, man, I felt so bad. I know. It's like he was just like this poor Russian scientist who was like kind of had to force, was being forced to like work on this project by the mili by the Russian military. You guys. need a little bit of a sense that he's kind of a dick there at the beginning when he's negotiating with Hopper, but he very quickly comes around. It's like I don't know, like I'd be kind of a dick too if I was being held hostage. Yes, you can't blame him. <laughs> yeah, that guy, man. I felt so, I felt worse for his death than I did for, how many people died this season? Um, uh, there were a bunch of orphans made this season, yeah, because Hopper died. Uh, Billy died. Billy died, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but in that house, it was just Billy and Max, right? They did not have their parents there with them, right? If, I don't know, we never I, see their parents? I, yeah, I could have sworn that that was a thing, that they basically moved away from there, because the mom's dead, we know that. Or the mom, no, the mom moved away, mom moved away. But they were definitely not living with the mom. I don't think they were living with the dad either. I think it was just Billy and Max in that house. So I had questions at the end of what happened to Max. Yeah, I, I was wondering that too. It's like, is she on her own? It's like, I was wondering what was going to happen to Elle. But then I saw her like move away with Will. I was like, oh, okay. That just made sense to me. That, that made sense because... Joyce would totally adopt I, Absolutely. Like during like season two of Stranger Things, Joyce was like the mother figure for she her. She very much is. Yeah. Yes. Um... So that absolutely made sense, but yeah, I want to know what happened next. It's like, um, is she going to move in with, like, one of the kids, or, like, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, thank you, car outside. <laughs> but uh, when it came to Alexi, man, you really, like, the friendship that he formed with Bald Eagle there at the end, which I totally was convinced that Bald Eagle was going to die here, too. Uh, I also want to know what happens to his character towards the end, because after he kind of becomes this hero... I always get this sense, like, next season he might be working for the U.S. government rather than being the weird conspiracy guy coming up with theories about the U.S. government. Uh, which, that'd be a great character <laughs> art for him. Um, I'm also really glad that Paul Reiser popped up back at the end. I forgot he was even in this show. <laughs> uh, but I really wish we had got a little bit more of him in here, so I'm hoping he's going to be more in season four. But, uh, yeah, at the end, seeing him at the 4th of July fair... Just wanted to be a part of all of this. Yeah. And him, he wins the big Woody the Woodpecker thing. Which, by the way, he was, like, watching Woody Woodpecker cartoons in, like, the, um... In, uh, Bald Eagle's base, yeah. yeah. And, it's <laughs> and there's even a moment where he says, can we watch Looney Tunes? Yeah, <laughs> this guy, you get a bit of a character on him there. He's not just signed this guy. He also really likes, uh, He likes cartoons. cartoons. And he likes junk food. He likes cartoons, <laughs> likes junk food. And there at the end, he gets, the, he comes in there with this thing, he wants to be a part of the fair. Bald Eagle's telling him, no, you can't listen. It's all rigged, it's not real. And then he wins, and he goes, it's not all rigged. And he's got the big boy, the woodpecker. And then the moment that the Terminator pops up in there, <laughs> I just, both of us like, went oh, no. in sync. We both just went, no. <laughs> The show wasn't the only thing that went in slow motion at that scene. We both just, no. <laughs> Yeah, man, it hurt so much. I wanted to see that character survive, and God. Which, in all fairness, the main reason why we felt so much for him was because Billy, you get some heart from Billy at the end. You get to see he wasn't always an I asshole, guess so, but, I kind but of... he was still an asshole. Yeah. We, know, we know from season two, that guy, he was a complete bag of shit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, him dying him dying there and sacrificing himself, it wasn't so much, oh, he is a good guy. It's more of... It's good to know that this guy got one good thing in before he died. It's like he redeemed himself with self-sacrificing. It's kind of... Not even full redemption, mm. but he got something in there. And you always kind of want to see any character show at least something good in them. Yeah, it's like... If there's a if there's a douchebag character, you either want them to die because they deserve it, or you want them to have like a, some sort of uh, Steve. Steve yes. is a perfect example. A of redemption, this. yeah. Steve is a very good example. Yes, exactly. By the way, this can, this proves my theory that anybody whose name begins with letter B in Stranger Things immediately dies. <laughs> Billy. Barbara. Barbara. Uh, yeah. Was there another one? Um, wasn't. Well, the diner guy. Bob. Yes. Bob was Sean Bob, Austin's character. Yes. Oh my God! Yes. I finally remember his character. Oh my God! You're right. Ooh. Oh. Let's see. Mike, Will, Lucas. Okay, they're good. <laughs> Had to check. Had to check. 
What's Dustin's girlfriend's name? Susie? Yes. yes. Okay, we're fine. You want to talk about Susie? Or? She's great. She was great. <laughs> I thought she was so cute. She, you you see her and the way that she's acting, and you immediately go, that's the girl for Dusty. Yeah. Like, you just instantly get that sense. And the moment where they sing... Um, Never Ending Story. Story. Which, when Netflix announced Stranger Things is now... Stranger Things Season 3 is now up. Don't worry. This will make sense. And then they put up a gif of Never Ending Story, and I kept watching the whole time. I was like, are they gonna ride the big goo monster? <laughs> so, and then when that came around, I went, oh, it's, that's what it is. Yeah, that was adorable. That was so good. Uh, so, wow, if they introduce a character with a B in their name in the next season, uh, look out for that. <laughs> Which, that was another thing that didn't feel like it came back around. At the beginning of this, <coughs> sorry, at the beginning of the season, Joyce was having uh, memories of Bob, and then she goes in that base and she sees Bob's final moments again. She's reliving it. You never get anything else on Bob ever again after this. And it kind of felt like they were setting up something about her having to deal with that, and then it never comes back around. That does feel like another drop plot line. Like that, uh, Will having to learn about the change that's going on, and they're no longer kids. Uh, and there was one other one that I remember looking at and saying, oh, it's going to be a big thing. It never comes back around. Um, one character that we have not talked about yet. Um, sorry, I had a thought that I didn't finish there. <laughs> uh, was, I was saying, yeah, the reason why Alexi hurt us the most when he died was because the other two characters who died was Billy and that guy was a complete bag of dicks. <laughs> so you get like one, like, all right, he did a good thing. Doesn't mean I forgive him for the stuff that he did, but mm -hmm. it is good to see someone doing one good thing. Then again, it could entirely have been he wasn't trying to save Eleven. He was just trying to fight this thing that took advantage of him, so he was doing it for himself. But still, there is a reason why I didn't feel really bad that he died. And then Hopper, I should have felt terrible when he died. But he was so bad this he season. He was. That I'm sorry, man. I can't. I like, can't. I'm wondering if they did that on purpose so he wouldn't feel as bad for him when they kill him. <laughs> no, I think that they were just going, oh, shoot, we forgot how to write Hopper. I think this is what it was. <laughs> but I will say... His actual death didn't feel anything for. I just looked at him and went, you were too much of an asshole this season. But the letter that they read at the end, that's when I got a lot of emotions mm -hmm. coming out of me. Uh, but the other character that we have not talked about yet is Lucas's sister. And I love Lucas's sister in the last season. Erica. Erica. Erica because you the... can't spell America without Eric. Nice, I forgot that. <laughs> at the end of the, la in the last season, I love that she had this great brother-sister relationship with Lucas because she was so that, I'm going to tell Mama and you about this, just giving him constant shit, and I love the relationship they had there. I've got hiccups all of a sudden. <laughs> But they took it, they basically took that relationship and moved it over to Robin and Steve and Dusty. Uh, I love just her interactions with them the entire time. <laughs> I love how she is just calling them on so She's much just crap. so sassy. She, she just <laughs> takes command of that situation as soon as she arrives there. The moment that they need her, and I remember that moment where they were thinking, okay, we can't fit into the duck, which, by the way, Kudos to this for being like the first TV show I've ever seen where they showed an air duck being an accurate size. Uh, but that moment where they couldn't get get in and there's that ding 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 and they turn around. I remember both of us in the exact same moment just went, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was not expecting her to become as big of a deal as she was, but you look at her in this season and go, oh, you're now part of the crew. Mm -hmm. You're now part of the team. You're in on this. <laughs> yeah. And it's so weird that this show, it began as uh, Mike, Lucas, Dusty, and Eleven. And Dust not Dusty, Dustin. Uh, but that's Susie's nickname. That's Susie's for nickname. <laughs> But yeah, you look at it, and it really just kind of began as them, and then you got Hopper and Joyce, like, right over here, and then you got uh, Will's brother and Nancy kind of, like, right over here as well, just, but these are the main ones, and then you got, like, two little groups just circling around. Now we're in season three, and there's no longer side groups. No. Everyone is part of one big group, and that one big group is Mike, Will, Dustin, Lucas, Eleven, Max, uh, Hopper, Joyce, um... Uh, Nancy, uh, Nancy's uh, boyfriend, Will's older brother, uh, Erica, uh, Bald Eagle's in there, and other characters who died this season. But you went from four main characters and two little side groups over here to basically 12 main characters in Honestly, there. it's like 
I really like that they kind of like swap out the groups I depending that too. on. That like, was another the, thought that I had this season. Yeah. That it's great seeing that Dustin wasn't even really with his friends this season. He goes over to Steve, and the relationship between Steve and Dustin is great. That I love how that has progressed from season two on to this one. Uh, but yeah, you go into that, and Dustin's now over here with this, and Erica, who was only with Lucas over here, she's now in this group over here as well. Yeah, the mixing and matching is what makes this so good because you look at it and you can say, yeah, you can. You have no uh, lack of basically character interactions uh -huh. you have because you have so many characters that you can't help but sit there and go, all right, who have we not seen interact with each other? Mm -hmm. Move them around, have that be the thing that goes on this season. Uh, and it's oh, like, Robin, didn't even include Robin in there. <laughs> yeah, so we're up to 13 now. Yeah, and it's like, um, you know, I liked in the first season, like, it was basically like one plot based around, like, the main group of kids, but, like, you know, as, you know, the plot progresses... We have three solid plots this season. Yes, three solid plots, and, like, three groups of kids trying to figure out everything, and they all, they're all intertwined with each other, too. So. Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, I think this show, again, this season had a lot of problems, I feel. But when it still does the stuff that I like about Stranger Things, it still knows how to do that stuff that I like about Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Uh... Anything else that we want to talk about in here? Uh, I was happy to see Gary Busey's son popping <laughs> up in here because that dude is one of the best at playing a crazy asshole. He still popped up here to play a crazy asshole, and yeah, nobody knows how to play a crazy asshole quite like him. <laughs> um, anything else, really? Uh, I Also, one thing that's a little bit of a stinger towards the end, uh, I like that they came in here with one of those very 80s, very 80s, like, when news was starting to turn to propaganda mm -hmm. kind of things of hard edge. Boo, boo. Here's all the stuff. Is this town actually possessed? Is this hell? What did this celebrity do over here? Back when that stuff really started to become famous and we started to see uh, it popping up everywhere and we didn't realize what it was going to eventually turn into. <laughs> um, yeah, they came in here with like a perfect parody at the end, but the way that was depicting this town, it did make you ask, oh shoot, season four, is this going to be like, is it going to be like when you go to that town in West Virginia and they've got all those Mothman statues everywhere? <laughs> uh, is it going to be that there's a bunch of tourists running around trying to find like all the possessed weird crazy shit? Is there going to be the government taking over this town to keep it all a secret? Uh, how long until it's all exposed? There's a lot of great questions to ask for the next season on that. Um, one thing that I will say, we mentioned how they use the movies to set up stuff mm -hmm. for, to be like foreshadowing things mm -hmm. that are coming. I did feel like there was a lot of product placement though. I felt like there was a, well not even product placement, just 80s nostalgia. Yeah. I felt like there was way too much 80s nostalgia in here. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people mentioned in season one and season two, there's a lot of 80s nostalgia. I felt like it was the right amount in those seasons. I felt they went nuts this season. Well, then. considering they built a mall in Hawkins, which is basically nothing but a giant building dedicated to product placement. It's fair. <laughs> but I also get the sense we, uh, there was, but, uh, sorry. Stop. Repeat. Okay. But there was, like, a moment in there where they stopped to have a whole conversation about new Coke. And I remember looking at that just going, wow, that's, like... Just you're stopping the whole thing with product placement and to be 80s nostalgia in here. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. And there's a lot of other modes in there. That's the worst to me. However, afterwards, we started talking and going, yeah, didn't they say they were bringing New Coke back for this? And we looked it up and, yeah, they were bringing no, New Coke back specifically to celebrate Stranger Things Season 3. And that's kind of when I realized, oh, this was all done on purpose. Because one thing that people don't know about Netflix, everybody looks at all the shows that Netflix has and they think, oh, Netflix is really successful. Netflix is in debt. <laughs> Netflix is in the red. They're like $7 million in debt or oh, something. Wow. Yeah, because they keep taking out loans to make these really big shows. And they haven't really realized, yeah, you've kind of got about as many people subscribing as you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And you got a lot of people subscribing. you got a lot of stuff going for you right now. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, you're spending a little too much money. But then I looked at this. You got The Gap. You got Kit Kats. You got M&M's. You got Coke. You got all these other things. That's when I realized, oh, this wasn't nostalgia. This was you making money. And I can't really blame them. After I kind of realized that about New Coke, it does feel like they stopped too much to reference 80s stuff in here. But when it came to the product placement, I was okay with it because it made me realize, yeah, you just paid for the entire season with this. 
and you needed something to pay for this entire scene. Yeah, it's like they call up the company. He's like, hey, can we promote you? But uh, give us your 80s logo, the logo you had back in the 80s. Which there was a thing in here where he, they were getting a Kit Kat bar and it said the Kit Kat Cash, $150,000 giveaway. We looked it up. That was an actual giveaway that was going on in 1985. So, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. They actually captured. That's one thing that I got to give them. They actually did capture the look and the feel of the products at the time. Mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed that. That's a little touch. Yeah, I so that. I can't really complain about product placement when it actually, like, fits the time. Exactly. There's just times in there in which they would, like, during the moment where Elle was spying on them. Which I like that that came back around and they did bring up, yeah, that was a shitty thing you did. Don't do that. I like that they brought up, yeah, it's not just the boys who are being dicks about yeah. this stuff. Um, but uh, there was that moment in which they were there and Mike just stopped and goes, Look, my fingers are covered in the cheese dust from this tortilla, from, not tortilla, tostino, whatever it's called. <laughs> the flaky green Doritos thing. Uh, <laughs> green? Where did that come from? Orange? <laughs> that was weird. Uh, what, what Tostitos am I eating? Uh, One's from the 90s, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so there was a lot of product placement, but I don't really have a problem with it because I realized they pay for the entire show with this and they mm -hmm. need something to pay for the entire yeah. show. But it was a lot of, like, movie references and stuff that they, uh, it was a lot of the other small references to pop culture that I had a little bit of problems mm -hmm. with. I felt like they went a little overboard with it. Uh, but yeah, still really like this season. We don't give out scores to TV shows because it kind of changes on season by season basis, but I would say in the end this is my least favorite of the Stranger Things seasons, but it's, it's still really damn good. It's just, I felt the first two seasons were amazing. So, great, amazing, amazing. It's, yeah, it's still really damn good. Yeah, it's like, I understand that they want to do something different because they don't want to, like, just keep doing the same thing over and over again. I don't have a problem with them doing anything different on this. I just have a problem with Hopper. Yes. I feel like... Well, it, you don't have to worry about Hopper anymore, question mark. mark. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let us know in the comments down below... Do you think Hopper's really dead? <laughs> uh, also, what do you think about this season of Stranger Things? And you can also let us know on Twitter and Twitch at Professor Thorgy. Uh, also, you can join us over on Patreon. We do uh, little movie uh, commentary tracks every single month. Uh, we just did one for Spider-Verse. Or I did, I should <laughs> say. But yeah, thank you guys very much. And nothing else to review this weekend. What's coming out next weekend? What is coming out next week? I have no idea. We'll review whatever's coming out next weekend. It's summer movie season for two more weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely still stuff coming out. So, yeah, uh, thank you guys very much, and come back next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.